Hello, everyone, and welcome to the, the special event of My Galera Guests. So I'm very grateful to Rosaria, who gave me this place on our LinkedIn live channel. And for this special episode of September of My Data Guest, I am thrilled to have a proficient NIME user but also an innovative educator, but also a renowned scholar and um, marketing analyst, digital marketing and service uh, research researcher. My warmest welcome to Professor Francisco Villaroel. Hello, Roberto. Hello, uh, nice to see you. Nice to see thank you. It's great to see you. Yeah, thank um, you very much for the invitation. Thank you very much for accepting and for being with us. Uh, so let me tell you, Francisco is currently an assistant professor of marketing at Luis Quito Carli University in Rome. His research is centered around unstructured data, such for example, as online reviews and social media content, and around text and image mining for marketing insight. He was recently awarded with a Teaching Excellence Award from a chancellor of his home institution and with the title of NIME Contributor of the Month in April 2022. For today's episode, uh, we are turning the tables. Uh, together with me today, there are Simone and Anthony, two former students of our guest, and now they are interns at NIME and today they will be our special interviewers. So if you could, what would you ask your marketing analytics teacher? So Simone, Anthony, we are all ears. Hi everyone. Uh, so it is a pleasure to uh, interview our former professor. Uh, we had a full course taught by him uh, now, I think one year ago, one full yeah. year ago. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks Roberto for the introduction. And uh, yeah, it's a great pleasure for to be here today. Thanks obviously to Rosaria for lending us this spot. And uh, now we can maybe start with the interview. Okay, so uh, I would like to start with your uh, research activity. And like, I would like to talk a little bit about your background since you have been an active researcher for a lot of years. You have a lot of experience. So uh, we are all curious, what's your, what exactly is your background? How, how would you describe it? And mm -hmm. what is your scientific area of expertise? Okay, thank you. Uh, so my, my background is in, my bachelor was in business and economics. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, I graduated back then in 2006 in Chile. So I'm from Chile. Uh, I did my bachelor at the University of Chile. Then uh, I worked for about, six years in mainly topics related to branding. So it was, was mainly marketing type of job, marketing communication. And that took me to start a, an MSc in marketing. That was in 2012 in Manchester. And, and during this, this MSc in Manchester, I, I kind of uh, had one course, which was called uh, uh, data science for marketing or something like that, you know, and and that's somehow how I kind of fell in love with the with the idea of analytics, you know, especially the analysis of unstructured data, uh, text data uh, for for insights, for marketing insights. And that then took me to start a PhD, uh, which I did at my PhD in, in the University of Maastricht in the Netherlands, where my focus was for four years. Uh, uh, the use of the use of text data for let's say marketing insights you know how we can extract some consumer and marketing insights from text data review social media and and i will say yeah since then i will say since 2012 until today uh, i've been you know just uh, expanding somehow and or deepening somehow this this background in at the intersection between marketing and analytics uh, Kind of a, mainly from a method, so I would say I'm a I'm a more data type of researcher, uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, that's a kind of the long story short of. <laughs> we, of, uh, of what we could I see your interest in text mining while taking your course, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> I I I'm surely I mean at the end of the day, uh, 
I mean, every researcher at the end, it, it, it starts putting, you know, his own expertise into class, right? And my expertise research-wise has been highly influenced by, by the use of text data, right? So yeah, 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 yeah. Like it is also a lot of fun, like the whole NLP research. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. Yeah, uh, another thing that is very interesting about your career is the fact that you actually traveled a lot. You started from Chile and then uh, you basically went to the States and then to Europe. So uh, you, have, you have conducted basically research both in the US and in Europe. And what, what was your experience with that? Uh, do you see any substantial differences in the two approach? And uh, what do you think are the strengths and weaknesses of each, of each, of each system? I, I think the the systems are uh, yeah they were all somehow different. Uh, for example, you know I mean I in Chile I would say it was yeah more similar to to what it's Italy a more I would say hierarchical type of teaching. There is more yeah, distance okay. between the professor and and students and and many students were kind of expecting the type of professor you know who goes there gives a lecture you know uh, lengthy and you know and then. It was less hands-on, you know, and less uh, interactive, right? Uh, in, okay. in my experience, you know, that, that was kind of the style in, in Italy overall. Uh, in, in the U.S., it's, uh, I would say, similar. Uh, there is also quite some hierarchy, you know, between the professor and students. You know, students will do, you know, mainly, you know, what they are taught in class. Depends, of course, in the university, right? But that's... Uh, that that's common and it also resonates with the volume of students that you have in one class like between 50 and 100 students um in the netherlands it was different you know in the netherlands we had this uh, problem-based learning approach uh, in the during my phd and and i used to have classes of 10 15 students you know and, and then it was completely different game you know it was like a more a conversation with the students in which you discuss how to solve a problem and and the class will kind of be in that structure. You know, there will be big lectures, but most of interactions were with the small groups. You know, so so I will yeah. say, mm -hmm. and, and it's a more horizontal, you know, like teaching approach. approach yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been yeah. told about that. Like we also have another uh, teacher that told exactly that told us exactly the same about the Netherlands mm -hmm. and the fact that we had a, a very horizontal approach to teaching. Uh, and in general, to like towards university and instruction. Yeah, that's true. Education, and yeah. by the way, uh, in your entire career, when is the first time you encountered NIME? And do you also use it in your research? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in 2012. I still remember it was in the, the beginning of my PhD in the Netherlands. You know, I, I'm a marketing, marketing person, more a business uh, economics person, you know, and, and I didn't have a, like a, a solid training on, on machine learning, uh, like uh, back then or um, or natural language processing yeah, so yeah. I, I kind of always learned by myself and that year I took a course in Maastricht that was called text mining something like that you know okay. it was a, a specialized course on text analytics you know in the in the computer science school in the computer science department in in Maastricht okay and, and that's when, you know, uh, I mean, I had all my colleagues in that course were, you know, like computer scientists, hardcore, it was a PhD type of course. So, uh, and and one of them, I remember, uh, he he recommended me using NIME uh, for, you know, for my project, you know, that was in 2012. Uh, and that was kind of really the first time, you know, and I started using NIME for, uh, for a research project I was doing back then. Uh, during the PhD, that's what you do research, right? Just research mainly, mm -hmm. a little bit yeah. of teaching. So I, I used nine for for two research projects, two, and and it went well. You know, like uh, I, I enjoyed doing it. it. Was intuitively intuitive, you know. Uh, and then when I started, like my my job as a professor of marketing assistant prof in in the US at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst, I. Uh, I started teaching with Nine. You know, that was the first time I I say, okay, why not teaching with Nine? You know, and and I remember back then, honestly, I there was like almost nobody teaching with Nine. And yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, even yeah. So so it was like a, a very 
unique experience and it was good you know i noticed that students liked it you know immediately yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, no long ago was it but, exactly but there wasn't any material honestly like it was like you will you will teach it you know there was material right but but it was like yeah. very minimal right so okay. you will have to, I, I had to teach everything like every almost you know uh, process and it, there were marketing students so without any background in, in computer science like programming. Yeah. yeah so it was was tough, tough, tough right now know. i think with the courses uh, the documentation the books uh, it, it's all very <laughs> much like it's all far simpler yeah 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 it's uh it, i mean it's i mean i can say it now i mean the yeah I, they had there is so many support material that uh, yeah, yeah, you can yeah. find that it, it makes the life of an educator much easier like yeah, uh, yeah 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 and we see that you also contributed to uh building to creating more content uh to, with nine so mm -hmm. more specifically, uh, we know that on the on the home page of the Nime Hub, uh, there is a live repository uh, for machine learning and marketing solutions that you built, you develop, you develop together with uh, with the evangelism team here at Nime. Um, how did you come up with this project in particular? Um, I mean, honestly, I always wanted to have a, a paper, you know, about that that could you know uh, be a repository and that could also help yeah. other researchers or the people doing projects you know with analytics that wasn't very much into hardcore coding you know with r or python so i i there was this special journals you know we we have to publish writing journals right and, and there was this special issue in the journal of business research Mm -hmm. and, and and a friend and a colleague of mine was leading that issue right and he told me hey you know why you don't you you know just uh, write an article you know about the uh, um, about you know machine learning you know and with nine would you kind of be interested and i said yeah i mean why not and the first person i thought in writing you know to to contact him to to help me was rosaria right i knew rosaria okay. since uh, that, that was in 2000 and 19 i believe or yeah and or 20 but uh, yeah uh, yeah and she, she said like yes immediately i mean as that's something else i've learned in these years that the the team there at nine it's like super hands-on and helpful and motivated and, and rosaria was like really really kind to say yeah let's do it let's write an article and yeah manual. exactly it worked out so <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, to give some context, Rosaria is the head of the whole uh, evangelist team. So the one that deals mostly with uh, education, documentation, uh, and uh, materials, uh, and so and so on. So of course, also helping the university. Uh, the, the university uh, setting is one of the main uh, aim of the whole uh, uh, evangelist team. Yeah. yeah, okay, so uh, continuing right now, um, some of the solutions that you proposed in the direct in the directory, in the repository mm -hmm. uh, that you work with, the evangelist team, uh, are based on deep learning and, uh, of course, for both image and text mining. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you plan to add uh, even more data uh, deep learning driven solution to populate the repository? Yes, yeah, we... we I'm currently working on a project that that uses deep learning for image classification, um, and and yeah, that's uh, definitely something. Uh, it should be in the repository maybe end of this year, beginning of next year. It's I mean it's a surprise. That's gonna be like a it's a big big project. Uh, we're in the um, I mean in, in the paper we plan to make also an app out of it. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's going to be linked with this image classification tool that uh, it could help content managers you know people who have to post content constantly especially images it should help them help them in the decision of which type of image to use and mm -hmm. how to how to combine it also with with uh, with text and by the way how can other researchers or other students access such repository well, they have to just go to the the nine hub you know and yeah. uh, go to i mean they can search for the 
machine learning for marketing or they just marketing or just mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah they can also write my name there and, and yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah I mean the knife hub is another like amazing resource for anyone scholars students anyone like yeah yeah definitely like it yeah. works also quite quite well like with the whole drag and drop interface so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it is very very cool yeah. yeah, I still remember the this amazing workflow that you uploaded back then in, for the course, which was about <laughs> movies. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's still we'll, there? Yeah, yeah, it's still there. It's still there. Like, no, nobody complained yeah. uh, yet yeah. uh, about uh, <laughs> that. Like, uh, I mean, we are not using that data directly. So, I mean, we cannot say anything. You didn't break any law. <laughs> when you break any yeah. law. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. And yeah. that's a good project, too. That one should be actually on the nine path. You know, yeah. on the on the machine learning for marketing. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's it, it is a little bit complex, though. So I mean, uh, yeah, it, it, it is a little bit uh, heavy to to run. I will say, <laughs> but still, yes, it is. It, it yeah, was but, an interesting uh, project. But we'll talk more about that. You know, in, but, in, but could in you a, create a prototype for the for the hub? That seems to be like a. Yeah, the prototype for the app, like I mean, a more compact one. Yeah, yeah, yeah we could, we could actually do that, but yeah, it would be maybe a, a component would be more feasible for that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it would take a while since it was maybe uh, a, a, a little heavy. bit a little bit complex yeah. and heavy. Uh, I'm working on something similar right now, not yeah. not not similar, but similarly heavy. And, <laughs> Yeah, like to to make it scalable and portable was not uh, that easy. Yeah, and by the way, in your of course we know you did many, but which is the contribution? The uh, let's say the collaboration with other partners, with other researchers. That uh, I mean, you are most proud of. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that that's a very hard question. I mean, I I mean, <coughs> I'm also a, a, like I still a young researcher. You know, I'm not like as experienced uh, as you said at the beginning. I would say I've been six years on 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 academia, like as an assistant professor. So um, yeah, um, I work in several projects. Each one, yeah, yeah very particular. The nine one, I I love it. You know, that's a, a very nice project because it's a you know, it talks about, you know, my experience with NIME and, and the, the use for marketing and it's a, an application. Like, so, so I will say that one, I like it, you know, because of, of, of that type of focus. And there are other projects that I like because, you know, they are kind of more into uh, nice theory. For example, I have another project that is really into language theory and and, and using language theory, we end up building uh, an NLP application. So, so I, yeah, I like yeah. that. You know, it was a, it, it, that that makes that project somehow very very unique. You know, it's a, that combination of theory and, and 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 analytics. You know, in the context of marketing, you know, I have a I have that project. And of course, you know the work that I'm doing now that I that that still. It's on, on those lines, along those lines, you know, yeah. uh, in the last years, I've started to incorporate more image analysis, image mining and video mining, you know, so like a wider as audio data. Also so, it became it, it became also simpler and more user friendly to use the, those technologies yeah, in the last recent, in recent years. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I will say, yeah, that's um, hard to pick that's, one, only one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we see you immediately fell in love with Nine, but uh, going passing to another topic, passing to your working experience, your teaching experience, uh, that we we can um, we can tell much about that because we were we were actually students in your mm -hmm. courses. We know you you teach the courses of uh, business and marketing analytics and uh, performance marketing course in the bachelor degree in uh, management and computer science at Lewis University. And we know that uh, NIME analytics platform is the tool, uh, the, the tool to go in your courses, to attend your courses, which is the main reason that convinced you to adopt it. Uh, yeah, I, I always think that they, that, I mean, for me as a, 
as a person, it's, it's nice when you you combine your resources, you optimize your time, right? And mm -hmm. and and back then in 2016, when I started using Nine for teaching, I say, I mean, why if I use Nine for my research, why I'm gonna teach, you know, analytics or marketing analytics with SPSS, you know, which is the mm -hmm. typical yeah, platform yeah. that people uses for marketing research, you know, or why I would use it. R, you know, because uh, I mean, I could also have chosen R. I, I use some R, and I say, okay, I'm gonna, you know, just try with nine, see how it goes. And I didn't have like too many expectations, and I noticed that students like it, you know. Always in my mm -hmm. evaluations, you know, most of people would say, yeah, we like the, you know, nine. We like the, we had a good experience. So, so that's yeah, the reason yeah. why I, I, I still use it you know uh, also because yeah. it is a way i think to level the background of people no because like people yeah. can come from different yeah backgrounds so yeah you have an engineer and uh, yeah that, an that's economist. a nice thing absolutely absolutely yeah. good point so before coming to Luis, i always thought in marketing you know to marketing students or management uh, actually you the the bachelor in management and computer science was the first let's say a class or batch of students which were like good at programming you know you already knew python r before taking the course so yeah uh, for me it was again once again an experiment you know see you know let's see if this if these guys like it you know i mean it's nice you yeah. know because it means that even marketing people can work with it computer scientists can also use it so yeah but anyway yeah. people pro people from erasmus probably enjoyed it a lot yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, uh, i would like uh, it would have been difficult for them to to work with languages that they didn't study at all <laughs> So yeah, yeah. yeah yes. I think like yeah, that's probably a way to avoid uh, getting involved with the heterogeneity, heterogeneity, heterogeneity yeah, of, heterogeneity. Uh, the, of, of people's background. Yeah, 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 of course. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so actually, you you took the risk, but it also rewarded you because uh, all the students were happy to use such an analytics, such a um, such an innovative analytics platform and uh, of course it rewarded you all the students were happy and so on uh, by the way we know that in your courses you um, your courses cover research methods that come from um, that relies on uh, customer data uh, market data to enhance all the marketing let's say the marketing decision making for example natural language processing, data visualization, machine learning, and so on. By going to the previous topic, um, do you include in such uh, classes, do you include use cases that are present in the machine learning and marketing repository, live repository present in the Nine Hub? And if yes, uh, which ones exactly? Yeah, so so I started doing doing it this year, probably yeah, uh, or last year actually with you. You were the first course that I, I used it. I used one, so I started using this customer experience workflow. I don't know if you remember. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, yeah, no, no, we and remember. We remember. We can I was telling uh, I was telling Robert about that the other day. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I, so, I remember. So use. those two workflows. It was for this unit about sentiment analysis and for the unit about uh, customer experience that that I I use you now I use just material that is on the nine hub you know we created uh, that was the first you know the first the first two things um, so covering a unit right as a customer experience measuring customer experience from reviews and the other one measuring sentiment analysis from Twitter uh, this year, I plan to integrate uh, a workflow that I mean, we've been working, you know, together on it. It's uh, the one about attribution models, mm -hmm. right? And Anthony knows and something the, about that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, you can yeah, tell us more about it that about that, Anthony. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and the other one is a brand reputation. The brand reputation workflow that it's a, it's also a, a new one. Um, customer churn you know sometimes i they think customer churn it's a it's it's a topic that i mean i i can cover but 
in, I mean, for my courses, you you are a third year, you were a third year bachelor course. You already knew mm -hmm. churn, so I didn't have to. Yeah, yeah, to like co co customer churn is like uh, like I'm, I'm not saying from a marketing perspective, from a, from a purely statistics statistics and machine learning perspective is like uh, 101 like the the first yeah. thing you work with is yeah. binary classification and churn because it's the most yes. uh, easy yeah. to so come up, like to so that's what i, I yeah i don't use it you know i i just uh, kind of mention it in class you know they can for people who is completely unfamiliar it can can be a good yeah shortcut to learn churn machine machine basic machine learning and so yeah, I will say those those yeah those workflows. Now I this year I'm implementing those. You know, starting there for. Yeah, and right now we can we can actually come back to what we were saying before about the the, the final project, uh, because uh, okay, it was one of the I think of the greatest things that we did in the bachelor. I like I I think it and like uh, it was it was wonderful because we had the chance. To work on something practical, of course, we had the chance to have uh, uh, an internship here in Nime, yeah. which, which has been, which has proved uh, uh, very much useful to understand new things, to learn new things, uh, to be in a new environment. So I will be forever grateful for that. And uh, um, but the fact is that also the actual competition was uh, great and interesting. So uh, how did you come up with the idea of uh, organizing that with Nime? Yeah, it, it, it came, the idea came from, um, so, I, you know, I, I always like applied applied learning, you know, and I like innovating a little bit in my course with something. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I get bored easy, you know, so if I do the same every year, I I kind of not don't like it. So I, I, I had to make changes. You, you uh, get bored. Yeah, yeah, I get bored. So uh, uh, what I... In, in 2015, you know, in before going to uh, before coming to Louis, when I was working in the states, uh, I did the first like in class challenge, you know, and and it was like a, it was called the the digital marketing competition, you know, and it was a, like a competition all across the states, you know, where mm -hmm. universities would compete, you know, with a digital marketing case, you know, and I enrolled all my students in that competition, you know, to to participate in the in this like national challenge. And, mm -hmm. and wow. two of my, and two of my teams got to the final. You know, one of them got second. So, wow, nice. So it was like it was, it was a nice, good, you know, nice mm -hmm. experience. You know, they 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 can put it in their CV. You know, they, yeah, I they got know jobs. Uh, you know, they. So I say, okay. I, then I I went next year. The year after to Louis, and I say, okay, I have to do a challenge, you know, uh, maybe I can come up with one by myself. And I, I came up with a challenge that was uh, 2016, and that challenge didn't include nine, you know, and, and it was a challenge with an, a company in Italy, a data company, uh, KPI6. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know it, it's an analytics uh, company. No, no, I don't think so. uh, and the challenge worked, worked well, you know, again, it worked well. Uh, Actually, when you mentioned this award that I got from, from Louis, it was that year, you know, the year I implemented the challenge, not with you, but with other, the, the previous course. The previous course, yeah. Yeah. The and first year of our of our yeah. very, very young Yeah, yeah very young program. program. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. So, right. I, so, yeah, yeah, so that, that second. was, yeah, second, second, your second batch, right? Second, yeah, second yeah. generation. Yeah. Generation. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, it was crazy. I mean, we you passed from that course was like I don't know thirty five students, and then you were like seventy. Now we have hundred students. So wow, really, it's, uh, <laughs> like linear. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I've noticed this. I yeah. I've noticed this too because uh, when I started uh, uh, studying data science, I was a little bit of an outlier. You know, people uh, told me like, "Ah, oh, what are you studying? What is that? What are you doing? <laughs> What's data yeah. science?" And then yeah. right now, but then it was at the master's spread, degree, yeah. everyone yeah. is choosing data you science say, in some of say, the definitions. So you can tell them yeah. I'm the boss now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, exactly. but yeah, but anyway, that's how I came up with the the challenge, you know. And and then I then the second year I say, okay, I mean, why not you know involving nine, you know, because the the, the working with the paper went well, a research collaboration. Then I say, why not maybe collaborating in in teaching, right? And uh, I knew, I knew, I mean, the the team knew me, you know, Rosaria, Roberto, you know. So mm -hmm. I I wrote them with this idea, 
I also like this, uh, I had this, I always wanted to work on a research project uh, about uh, creative industries, right? And and I say, okay, yeah. I, mean, my, I mean, I don't have the time, you know, to, to work on that project, you know, may, why not, you know, incorporating into my teaching, you know, I, yeah. I also get the chance to learn something about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and the the whole set like apart from ours, uh, which was the winner, but still uh, there was a whole set of interesting solutions about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I uh, mean, one project about you know you, which was movie posters. It was about music. Another project was like about NFT art. I mean, so many nice projects, you know. And so yeah, that was a, that's how I came up with it. And and, and then uh, yeah. Really, and, the only the only downside that I notice, you know, is yeah. that uh, well, first of all, you need a lot of time to do a challenge, and actually, that's why you remember where like, last three weeks and 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 I remember yeah, yeah, most like, students were completely stressed out. Yeah, uh, yeah, like uh, yeah, it it was like okay, okay, yeah. I I mean, uh, we all realized the fact that uh, there was no time. So yeah. yes, of course, like you need to uh, to compress everything yeah, in those yeah. three weeks. But see, we managed uh, to to work now because like okay, okay, three weeks you cannot write a paper in three weeks, but still you can uh, yeah, you can develop definitely uh, yeah. develop something in three weeks. So yeah, uh, eventually we managed. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that was yeah. the most important thing. And um, the fact is that at this point, uh, uh, since you have already engaged in uh, gamification based uh, teaching, you know, because uh, mm. in the end. Uh, competition is some sort of gamification and uh, um, do you think that this approach can be further announced by by you in the future or like do you have any ideas for it uh, this year i took a break from competitions you know i say that this year i'm, I'm not doing it you know it's uh, because it requires also a lot of involvement from from the from the lecturer and yeah and and i and, Too many yeah, students and, with, and, with, and with hundred students and you know uh, also commitment from nine you know and and at the same time uh, the bad side is that uh, so I also got it as feedback you know that is good to share that uh, when you create this competition of course there are only a few winners right uh, but uh, but people doesn't like to lose you know <laughs> and yeah of course uh, and that's normal right and and yeah, it creates some conflict, you know, still within within the class environment. So it's not all perfect about the. So yeah. I need to think about it, you know, how to. Yeah, how, but still, I would like but... to do it again, but uh, but I would like actually my idea will be to have just an entire course that is about a solution, you know, a competition that is just applied based, you know, one course which is it's just a challenge basically, six month project. Yeah, so mm -hmm. just that. That sounds very innovative as a teaching method. Yeah, as an approach. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, f like for what concerns me, at least in my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, we had we, we only had uh, one uh, other chance, basically, to have a gamification-based approach. No? And so in uh, both of these cases, uh, uh, I can say that uh, uh, I was uh, very excited and uh, it was the those two cases were the projects where uh, I basically had put like where, where, where I basically put uh, much effort. So uh, with respect to more classical assignments, mm -hmm. why when I was uh, stimulated by the fact that I was competing with someone, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, there was much more involvement, uh, much more participation at least on my side, mm -hmm. and I was really engaged. So I think like oh yeah. It actually can create a little bit of competition in a negative sense, uh, like inside the class. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think, like at least in our experience, it did not become uh, toxic or so. It just, uh, yeah, yeah, I think but, it just uh, yeah. pushed people uh, to the boundary in order it to. Was, it to, was a good incentive. Yeah, like people uh, stayed uh, until late to work on the projects. They were willingly. Uh, doing so like uh, just yeah, to that's true. just to win so it basically it pushes a lot of people towards uh, yeah. their best in my opinion yeah as i said i would love to do it like this you know like just a, a course in which it's entirely designed for a challenge you know not like as, as it was you know for you or last time which is just the last three weeks uh, because it's yeah, yeah, too I compressed mean, you know too compressed yeah, it's no, like, no, it makes sense it makes sense to yeah. make it like uh, 
uh, step by step. It makes sense, mm -hmm. yeah. especially uh, with the fact that you have to learn a new uh, a new software by the like from the ground up, and so yeah. you need to get the basis of it, the, the the basics of it before actually competing on something. So like a more progressive approach may be a fact, like uh, maybe indeed better. And uh, uh, another fact that I enjoyed a lot about the competition was the fact that it was basically the only time that we had real, uh, um, basically real feedback from people uh, from the yeah. business environment. Yeah. So we uh, we had the chance to talk with with data scientists from Nine, of course. And right now they are our colleagues. But uh, back then it was it was a pleasure because. Uh, you basically didn't have the chance to speak to other people that that with data science, mm -hmm. uh, and so it was. I think it was uh, a great highlight. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that this can actually impact the outcomes, the overall outcomes of the project? Like, I mean, this collaboration with the business, yeah. uh, with the business environment, and uh, and what do you what do you think are the differences between these two approaches? Like more conventional one-to-one -one professor-student approach and the one which involves also a third party, which is the uh, outside business. Yeah, I mean, it's the best scenario is, of course, involving outside business, right? And I I, I knew that. That's why I I wanted to involve Nine. That's why, I mean, the first time I ran the challenge, I also involved people from, from companies as a jury, you know, in the sense that it will expose students not just to my evaluation, which is a somehow biased for my expertise, but but it will also include, you know, uh, I, I, you remember, you might remember, right? You had a jury which was involved by people from Nyman, also a professor of marketing. So so it was more than more than a single, you know, com more than just me evaluating. I think that's, it helps, you know, and, and the, I mean, the, the people from Nyman, which uh, the evangelist team, which actually collaborated with you, that was excellent. I really like, you know, and maybe you can tell me more about it, but the the fact that you had you had a special forum to post questions to and and kind of that obliged many people to write with a question to the forum, you know, or uh, kind of expose themselves, you know, because not everyone, you know, is like really hands-on on things and 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 I think that pushed them a little bit to to engage with the community. Yeah, yeah, like Naima all this community based uh platforms so yeah if if you need help with nine uh, yeah the best way to go is the nine forum so yeah it it, it pushed the like the people I, I don't know if uh they were pushed to write on the forum but still they were for sure pushed to uh search. <laughs> to search on the documentation <laughs> yeah. to watch yeah. videos uh, and so yeah that's half of the of the job anyway yeah so yeah i think well that's that's an important especially because I will say computer scientists, students, most of them, they get that, you know, or, or at least they, with, with my course at the end of the day, they get, end up getting it that there is a lot of self-learning, you know, in, in data science and a lot of, which is trial and error, you know, which is, uh, yeah, they are like always, true. you know, maybe five ways to solve a different problem, you know, so the yeah, role of, I would say, the, yeah, the, the role of the educator is not going to be always tell you this is the only or <laughs> there is yeah, yeah, maybe like, a more efficient way to do it, right? So it is not it's not so linear. Our job and in general yes, the, yes, the subject. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I do agree with you. It's actually teaching how to learn how to Yeah, yeah. yeah. To, it is teaching to, how to learn, of course, giving yeah. also the basics, but yeah. still, yeah. Yeah. And maybe for many that, yeah, for, yeah. for many students it's like more like teaching them how to deal with frustration. <laughs> you know, like yeah. there are many students that they 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 struggle a lot once it doesn't work you know they they kind of they 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 have difficulties in keeping up and finding a solution and i think it's a it's part of the teaching you know which is not technical it's more like a attitudinal towards Struggle how based, to though. work yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's yeah. actually how this work works because yeah. if you don't try you will never find a solution yeah. and uh, but if you try Maybe yes, yeah. of course. Iterating, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, computer science is basically uh, iteration. <laughs> Maybe yeah, computer yes, science and also also statistics, econometrics. There is yeah, also a lot yeah, of it's... trial and error, you know, and yeah. they are all intertwined. So yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe this is one of the reasons why, uh, at the beginning of of uh, 2022, the chancellor of Louis University 
uh, rewarded you with a Teaching Excellence Award uh, for for your work and especially your commitment in improving the Bachelor of Mar um, Management and Computer Science. And uh, let me ask a question. What was the most uh, challenging, but at the same time, rewarding part of this entire process? The, I mean, the, the, I, I, I enjoy teaching, you know, I, I, I like teaching. So the, the nice of thing about this award is that the students, you know, vote and, and, mm -hmm. and, and decide if they, they enjoy the course or they like it, it was useful and, and it was rewarding, right? But um, yeah, so it's, a, it's, it's nice to, to get, you know, this type of award is encouraging. Um, yeah, so the most the most like rewarding part is uh, I will say of of the job is when you see engaged students. You know, it's not yeah, it's more exactly. in the day to day, right? So when you have a class uh, in which uh, you have like hundred students and just uh, maybe forty yeah. attend, you know, or or you have a class, you know, in which. No, nobody I, pays attention to what you are saying. Can I give you a suggestion for this answer? Maybe yeah. uh, another uh, rewarding part of this entire process is is actually represented by by us. We are we are two students of your course, and now look where we are. We are working <laughs> yeah. with nine. We are doing always a, modest, a, eh, Bunny. We are doing an incredible experience. Always, uh, as always, always pretty nine. much honest. Uh, no, that, yeah, but that's that, that, I mean that's a, that's the reality. Uh, 100%, 100% agree with you. I mean, that's, I, I should have said that since the beginning. I mean, the, the most rewarding part is that actually, right? That uh, for me, this was the first experience, you know, in which, you know, I, I believe uh, six students, you got internships, you know, in, in nine, mm -hmm. you, you had, yeah, you had yeah. the chance to travel to, to Germany, to Constance, to work there, work with data scientists. That's a really unique experience. Actually. Yeah, you have still haven't told me about how that experience yeah, is going. It has, but it, I, it, has, it has been fun. It has been fun. Yeah. It is still fun. We are working. Yeah. Will be fun. We are working hard. We have to yeah. say that, but it yeah. is fun. It is fun. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it's amazing. It's, you know, the, the fact that you you got this chance of like a also an intercultural challenge, right? Uh, you have to travel somewhere. Uh, so good. Very, I think that's the, the people uh, in Constance that do not speak English. <laughs> for for me, yeah, for me that has been the most rewarding, you know, ex experience that challenge. That uh, yeah, yeah, so I, I mean, learned it was good, you know. Maybe that's why I had to take a break this year for a challenge. Yeah. Like, too much, but... it, it was too intense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, now we are approaching the end, so I think we again uh, actually conclude with a uh, few forward-facing questions. Um, of course, uh, this is the most classic one that I can that I can make. Uh, but I will anyway ask you that. Yeah, um, <laughs> where do you see marketing analytics going in the next few years? And do you believe businesses will uh, increasingly adapt to other driven solutions? Yeah. Well, I think definitely attribution is going to be marketing attribution. So the okay. the use of analytics, you know, to uh, to understand which uh, marketing channel, touch point, uh, or customer interaction was the one that led to a conversion, to a purchase, maybe you know, to a recommendation or something like that. Uh, organizations, of course, we we know they have better data, right, about uh, if the consumer interacted with the SEO or if it uh, interacted with a, a banner or with an ad or with a, maybe a TV show or um, etc. Right. So the fact that we have that data and we can we have also better models to to understand links, you know, between these channels and purchase. Exactly. Um, I think that's and that's I will say it's a combination of econometrics, statistics. Yeah. And there is very little machine learning still on it, you know, interestingly. I think, you know, from my perspective, it is not too much machine learning and, and there can be more. So, so yeah, I think it, uh, it, is, it is a very, it's a potential future field of research. Of yeah. Course. And it is, yeah. it, it is like for the little that I know of, of that field, I think that it's very difficult to actually formalize a model dealing with that because, yeah, it's not really, it's, it's really different, uh, difficult to actually state uh, causality between uh, 
yeah. two events, no? So yeah, basically, like yeah. until uh, you look at correlation, then everything is yeah. a little bit simpler at an inference level. But wh when you look at uh, causality, then <laughs> things become uh, a lot, uh, a lot more difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you add on top machine learning, because causality, of course, econometrics can help us better there, maybe. But yeah. start predicting, you know, maybe what's going to be the next channel. You know, maybe uh, that's something that a question that I'm not pretty sure if it's entirely answered or not research wise. Mm -hmm. Machine learning, of course, can help predicting what might be the most likely next channel and how you should operate on that channel. Right. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I do think that uh, it's actually a great uh, field of uh, research for, uh, in general, for machine learning and, of course, marketing analytics, uh, both. And uh, another question related to machine learning is the one of uh, uh, AutoML. So do you think that our job will be replaced in the future? I do not think so. So I'll just, uh, I'll just tell you so. Uh, but anyway, where, like, uh, how do you see, like, um, What's your opinion about this technology? Do we have to worry about the, about our jobs? And do you think it will be like everything will be automated in the future? Yeah, I think of course uh, 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 there is gonna be a lot of automation in the future. I really like some some reflections of, of one of the most prolific authors in in, your, in marketing, Roland Rust and Ming Kui Huang. They are both like very much into the field of artificial intelligence and the intersection with marketing and um, and one one of the their most recent books, you know, uh, is the, the feeling economy. You know, the the idea that uh, that artificial intelligence and I I guess to some extent this auto machine learning uh, is having some stages, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in the present, is very much focused on the last most recent years on mechanical tasks. You know, factories. Uh, in the present and in the next maybe five years, ten years, it's going to be more analytical task, right? So maybe deciding which type of advertising to send to a customer, right? Uh, Language-based models or uh, which images to show or how to retain a customer. Because those are analytical tasks, right? That, that currently humans do much of they it or they participate. Know. Yeah. But uh, but analytical models somehow will will might take over. And the future, you know, it's, a, it's, I would say, empathy, you know, and the uh, empathy or somehow the feeling, the feeling part of artificial intelligence. So, yeah. So my my perspective is that, yeah, in general, like uh, uh, analytics, analytic teams, you know, uh, like a business type of jobs or marketing type of job, they, they need to, of course, uh, understand better what's the role of, you know, the human touch or the empathy or the feelings, you know, towards the uh, business relationships. And, and I think that in the future, in the maybe long term, uh, yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a the different differentiator because uh, analytics, currently, I think analytics is still a very much differentiator. And if you go to a job market, knowing analytics, you know, you will help companies. But maybe 10 years from now, as you say, yeah. auto machine learning is gonna uh, take over quite a bit. So, how you differentiate yourself? You know, how yeah, you integrate yeah. in the economy. Well, I think that you that the most important ethical problem with this is that you have to check the bias of this model, no? Because you 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 train. Yeah, them, so, true. Uh, if you yeah. Don't, like, so I think that in order to understand this. Uh, in, in order to give a human touch, you know, uh, to the to the whole pipeline, you need to study and uh, analytics a lot and mm -hmm. in order to understand what's going on uh, deep down deep down and understand the bias that could happen yeah, so i think that maybe it would be a big collaboration quality. between uh, uh, actual uh, automation and data scientists yeah because otherwise who knows what's gonna just... happen with yeah who knows what's gonna happen with privacy and regulation too so that's yeah yeah but this, this the whole trend of explainable ai i think it's relevant mm -hmm. uh regarding that so uh, right now, I think that it's time to bring Roberto in for the questions from our audience. Hello, everybody, and uh, Hello, thank you, Francisco, for uh, for being our guest, and thank you also to our two very special uh, uh, interviewers today. Um, so I was very interested uh, by the part where you where you were discussing how um, you could integrate basically the human side into a process that is 
a simple, or there could be a certain point uh, driven by um, an outer male. So this idea of the human in the loop, basically where that cooperates, that works with the model together, it's something that we mm. probably could think of will be seeing more in the future. And yeah. so actually my question has to do with something uh, that goes in this, in this direction. So uh, I wanted to ask, uh, what is that students today would then need to learn to be able to, to be prepared uh, for the data uh, job market in the future? Do you think that uh, be more aware of this complementarity between the human and the machine and how to integrate the human mm -hmm. and the machine work uh, together in a harmonious way would, would, would be an advantage, would be something they should capitalize on? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I, I think it makes me really think on, on a recent project that we are working, which is uh, the project is a re started, of course, as a research project, but is ending up somehow connected with the development of an app that, that, that the idea of this app is that it can help content managers, you know, to take better decisions about the content that they post in, in their daily job, right? So, uh, and and the implication that this has for, I would say, education is, uh, I will say, it requires more interdisciplinary in education, in the sense that, uh, of course, a, a marketing students and a computer scientist students, they both know that uh, their job is going to be very much uh, interwined with, uh, with apps and with tools that help them in their sure. daily jobs currently like Google Analytics, right? I mean, for anyone who works in, so that's the most basic, right, example, but the, the, so so I believe that there is gonna be more, of course, uh, organizations are gonna also have the chance to customize the development of apps, right? That are supposed to enhance the, the job of a person who works for an organization, right? So, <clears throat> So organizations that have this ability, you know, of having people who, who knows how to design an app and people who also at the same time knows how to really what to ask to the app, how to collaborate with an app designer, you know, and, and, and a team, then they can create solutions uh, for a more efficient working within the organization, but also maybe also more uh, better quality product or services for consumers. So I will say, yeah. That's, uh, it's, that's my, my more guess. A, it's more of a fix on the so 360 degrees sort of uh, sort of uh, approach where right where you basically try to blend in the technology, some new technology that brings value to the company, mm -hmm. but also to integrate that technology into a process, mm -hmm. into uh, to mine for pattern for mine, to produce prediction and so on. So I see. So you basically so people so students out there try to get mm -hmm. your uh, your hands dirty with uh, yes, with a, yeah. a, 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 a bit more of a complex uh, process of integrating tools and uh, and uh, yeah. So hopefully this will this will yeah. uh, this will serve you in the future. That's what I try to do in my courses at least. I mean. Yeah, that's that, and that's great. I think. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you very much. That's all from my side. Thank you, Francisco. Uh, thank you, Anthony and Simone. And uh, see you soon. Bye bye. See you bye soon. Bye. So I had uh, a little question, a curiosity. Uh, if you were to be a nine note, what would it be? If I had to select my favorite note, uh huh, or three of them, or the top three. Uh, the top one, I will say. It's definitely the, the group buy. The group buy, no, this uh, yeah, is uh, it's very my favorite one. Yeah, the it's the so, group buy is actually useful. I agree. Yeah, it's that, it's that, kind of the most, the most, one of the most simple nodes, but it does so many things that you always need for something. So that's, I would say, in every project, there is some group buy in there. And uh, the string, 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 string manipulation, I like it too. I like it very much. And, mm -hmm. um, allows me to, to handle string data and I work a lot with text data, right? So, yeah, so yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, like, and this yeah. ties, like, it's very much related to the fact that uh, most people, when they think about machine learning, they think like, oh, these cool models, oh, this like, oh, yeah. like AI, but they, they, they forget about the fact that most of our job is basically uh, data yeah. manipulation. So yeah, yeah. It, it really makes sense that uh, an aggregation uh, node and, uh, uh, a data manipulation node uh, are actually your uh, uh, best, your favorite ones. Yeah, they are the 
yeah, they are they do the dirty work, right? Uh, yeah. But uh, but still, they 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 are one of the most common. Uh, I love yeah, the deep learning true. extensions. You know, currently, I love you know the the yeah everything that relates with models and deep learning. I think Nine does it very nicely and intuitive. You know, uh, for for you know for teaching as well. But but for yeah. me personally, I would say group by. Okay. Uh, before leaving, uh, the last two questions, last two quick questions. Uh, are there any upcoming projects you're working on with Nine or food, any upcoming conferences you will take part to? And, uh, uh, ah, yeah, how can people from the audience reach you in case? Yeah, they, well, they can reach me in LinkedIn. They can contact me through LinkedIn, no problem. Uh, or they can find me, you know, my email in, in Luis. Okay. So they can write me an email. Um, yeah, I'm working in different projects. So I'm working on, on stuff related with uh, influencers, you know, uh, influencer marketing, more into the content side of things. Uh, also projects related with uh, chatbots, you know, and, and interactions of, you know, a, a customer service type of uh, relationships, conversations using, again, text data there. Um, content marketing too, you know, uh, yeah uh, which is uh, images uh, and text you know this app that we are working on um, something with uh, with uh, with audio data too uh, so yeah a little bit uh, okay mixed stuff but the uh, the common pattern i will say i still very much into unstructured data yeah okay which is the fun which is the fun stuff uh to to process <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, all... it is it yeah. is very much fun uh, to, to end <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, I think that for today we had uh, a very pleasant conversation with our ex professor. Yeah, exactly. Also in a in a lighter key, and that's also yeah. nice to have this occasion. We talked about his experience as a researcher, as a teacher, about Nime, how great about how great is Nime, of course. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to thank you again, our important guest, our ex professor Francisco yeah. Villarreal for being our guest this evening and uh, to all uh, our hosts, to all our audience. Uh, see you soon. Yeah. Bye see bye. See you soon, guys. See you soon. Thank you very much for the invitation, guys. All the best. Bye bye.